Well, honestly, I, I believe this is a no-brainer. We have an eight-hour work limit in Germany right now, which I believe is kind of outdated as well. So if you work four days, why not work nine hours or nine and a half hours? We live in a comfort zone. Going from 35 hours to 32 hours in order to avoid burnouts is, in my opinion, um, um, bizarre. Um, because working 35 hours, you don't get a burnout. And we do have a significant um, part um, of our employees who have no problem in working 42 hours. Should you have to work more or less? Greece is introducing the six-day work week starting from July the 1st. Meanwhile, some organizations have suggested that workers can get just as much done in just four working days a week. Well, in defense of working more, or certainly not in terms of working less, is uh, Karl Heusken from VDMA, Germany's Machine Building Association. Karl, thanks for joining me. Uh, we'll get into the details on the Greek proposal in just a sec, but first, why do you think that people should work more and definitely not less? Well, honestly, I, I believe this is a no-brainer. Um, if you look at the demographic um, uh, development uh, in Germany and in other industrialized countries um, as well, um, we see that we are running out um, of workforce um, year by year. It's getting less. We have about double the amount of people getting retired and people um, getting into the um, labor market. Um, so working longer can compensate. It's an easy calculation. You just got to do the math. OK, so let's take a quick look at exactly what Greece is doing. So industrial manufacturing and 24 hour service businesses can switch to a six day working week if that company wants to. But tourism and food service businesses are excluded. And the one caveat is that employers must pay at least an extra 40 percent on top of the workers usual pay for that extra day. So, Carl, do you envision a Greek model spreading across Europe, perhaps coming to Germany? Well, if the Greek model uh, spreads out, um, I think um, it, it will um, arrive in many countries before um, it arrives in Germany, because uh, the discussion on what is the, the right uh, way of working and, and the right amount of working um, in, in Germany is kind of polarized. You know, on the one hand, uh, we have what I have just described, demographic development, uh, simple mathematics. Um, on the other hand, um, we have um, a number of people um, headed, um, headed by the unions uh, that are even asking for working less at the same pay. Um, so we have an amazing polarization here, and I think uh, it, it'll take some discussion um, to get into the right direction. OK, now it's clear that German productivity has stagnated compared to the rapid growth of the previous decades. So why is this an important factor, and how will working more factor into productivity? How could that lift Germany's productivity? Yeah, if we uh, we make regular um, service with our member companies, um, over three and a half thousand uh, um, engineering companies in Germany, most of them middle sized, family owned. Um, and it's amazing that the lack of qualified labor um, again and again is the number one issue they mention um, in slowing them down and decreasing the productivity because they cannot get the right people um, into the right jobs. This is the number one problem, even in times of um, external crises that we see all over the planet. Um, that is what buzzes um, companies. So um, uh, it is very clear that if that problem is solved, um, it is much easier um, for companies to be productive um, and uh, to grow. OK, so competitiveness internationally also factors into this. Um, if Germany can be more competitive to stand up to the likes of China, that would be great for Germany. But you know, Chinese workers have always had longer hours than German workers. So if we suddenly have to work more to keep up with international competition like China, surely that means that the quality of the work is the problem and not the quantity. I think both, uh, both is a problem, uh, quantity and quality. And we don't need to look as far as China. Uh, let's take Greek as an example. Already today, uh, with over 39 working hours, uh, um, Greek um, is leading by quantity now um, in Europe. And if you look at uh, Germany, we have um, an average of uh, 34 working hours only. Now, there are good reasons for that. Example given, we have a higher degree of uh, um, female work power, and uh, there is a higher percentage um, in women that work part time than in men. So we also looked at, if you look at men only, what is their um, average working time? Uh, the result is 38 hours. So it's almost one and a half hours less than in Greece. So we don't need to look um, to China. Um, we can already look at our European competitors and we see that Germans uh, do not work enough. 
quality is not the problem in Germany. I think we do still do have a, an excellent um, education system. Um, so in case we have enough quantity, um, I'm not so worried about the quality. Okay, so, so you blame that stagnant productivity more or less on the working hours, the amount of time that people are willing to put in, because otherwise it is about improving efficiency, yeah, automation, and training and these kinds of things. At least partly. Um, definitely, it's true that if you look at digitization, um, also German companies and, and German administration, um, they have to become better. Um, um, they have to do their homework. So it, it's not it, there is no one silver bullet. Um, um, but avail availability, quantitative availability um, of qualified workforce, um, as I mentioned before, um, is a key problem. And I think we need a we need kind of a new understanding um, in our society. You know, take the social democrats that are in government right now. Um, they are as, as a party. They are asking for for a thirty two um, hour week um, uh, with full compensation, which is a really anti productivity program. And and I really wonder. Um, how close um, um, are politicians who want that? How close are they to the reality in the manufacturing industry? Yeah, but, but they would argue that simply just working more hours doesn't mean that those are productive hours. And despite the extra pay that a worker might get, they this doesn't just have justify the risk of burnout for them and perhaps even more costs for the businesses in the end due to increased absenteeism by all of these extra working hours. Um, we believe that um, many people um, in the political arena underestimate um, the loss of productivity if you have to incorporate too many part-time models and too many part-time workers um, in your organization. It is much easier to organize um, a, a process um, if you have the respective well-defined um, uh, working time than if you have, in our company, we have over 40 different part-time models that we, have, that we apply in order to be an attractive employer which is the other side of the medal. In order to be an attractive employer not nowadays, uh, you need to apply um, all kinds of part-time models. But this is on the cost of productivity, no doubt. OK, but speaking of being an, an attractive employer, if one particular company says that you can get paid just as much, but you don't need to work Saturdays, let's say, if we are taking the Greek model, but another company does require you to do that, that company, and Germany has a shortage of, of specialist uh, workers, that company won't just won't get the workers. So even if you say it's allowed, it's legal to work a, a six day week or just just increasing the hours, because I know you're not necessarily arguing that it has to be a Saturday or so, you know, how even just the employers themselves, how will they encourage people to to get on board with this? I, I don't think it's likely. If, if you look, if you look, if you look at the situation in Germany, um, we ask for more flexibility. However, there is some flexibility already, and you do not have just one uh, kind of people that want to work part time um, or full time. You have different kind of profiles. If we offer um, more working hours, um, especially manufacturing, we ask. We also ask people to come in on Saturdays within the legal framework. I have to mention. Um, and, and they do the, they do so, first of all, because they're loyal to the company, and secondly, because they make more money, because every extra hour is paid. Um, so we have different profiles. There, there is an exchange, uh, or there is a trade-off, certainly, um, between leisure, spare time, family, whatever, on the one side, and um, um, working and making money on the other side. And we do have a significant um, part um, of our employees who have no problem in working 42 hours um, and making the respective money. If you offer a good job, people work 42 hours, it's no problem. OK, but there are studies that have been done into the four day work week, saying that people were just as productive, but in a shorter space of time. Um, are they made up those results? How do you how do you factor those into your, your decisions? Um, again, we have to make a uh, we have to make a differentiation. About what kind of jobs are we talking about? If you talk about um, an administrative jobs, um, engineering jobs, um, marketing, um, whatever, um, all these things that can also be done from home. I think home office and mobile work um, is is a big part of that uh, whole equation too. Um, then I agree. I agree. You can be very productive um, in four days. 
Um, by the way, uh, we have an eight hour work limit in Germany right now, which I believe is kind of outdated as well. So if you work four days, why not work nine hours or nine and a half hours? And then you can make up for that. Um, but certainly you can, in, in such jobs, you can be productive in four days as well. If you have a process um, oriented job in the chemical industry, if, if you're working shifts in manufacturing, um, in the machine building or in the car industry, um, it's a different story. Okay. So... Do you think that companies in your industry, so machine building, have exhausted every avenue when it comes to increasing productivity in these, you know, improving production processes and automation so that it has to fall on the shoulders of the workers in order to get the numbers up? I don't like this. Um, it has to fall on the shoulders of the workers. Um, I think um, what many companies offer, I, I mentioned my own company, is... Um, um, uh, on a volunteer basis, working more than 35 hours. In my industry, 35 hours is the average. 35 hours is five days, seven days a week. I Nobody has a burnout in that. You know? Yeah, but uh, um, the, 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 live, the, the worry is the know, slippery we, slope. We, though. Live, we live in a comfort zone here. We live in a comfort zone. Going from 35 hours to 32 hours in order to avoid burnouts is, in my opinion, um, um, bizarre. Um, because working 35 hours, you don't get a burnout. Um, but you can increase productivity if you use the qualified workers that you have um, and they work 38 and, and 40 hours and they, you can run your processes 24-7. Uh, you can run maybe your machines uh, through the weekend, whatever. Is this silver bullet, as I mentioned before? No, it is not. Um, there are many other homeworks a company and, uh, and, and politics have to do in, in Germany. However, this is one factor. Um, and stepping back, stepping backwards into a four-day week with full compensation is a real blow. I mean, if you work five days now and you take out one day, you know, one out of five is 20%. If you do that with full compensation, what you have is 20% uh, increase um, of salaries. Show me one single industrial company in Germany that can afford this. It's unaffordable. We are calculating ourselves out of European and global competition. So the worry, though, is more the slippery slope, so that if you increase working hours a bit now, then workers will feel that they need to work all of those hours. So rather than going from a 35 week to, let's say, a 40 hour week, the Greeks are going from a 40 hour week to a 48 hour week. And so, you know, the idea is if there's a if there's a jump in that just to 40 hours, then 48 hours is not far down the road and that workers will feel that they have to do that at some point. Well, uh, I mean, if you look back um, um, to the German uh, industrial history after World War II, I don't know how far we have to look back to come to a 48-hour week. I think no employer, uh, no association uh, in, in Germany would ask for that. Um, if you look at 40 hours, we find many, many industries in Germany where this is super normal and you have no burnouts. So um, we're not asking something which is kind of out of bounds. Um, we're just asking um, from getting below normal back to normal, making 40 hours, as an example, make 40 hours the new normal also in the engineering and the manufacturing industry. That is what we ask for. Okay. Um, Carl, you also believe that uh, Germany should increase its retirement age, saying that it's, it's necessary. It's just a fact. It's an economic necessity. Why do you think that? Well, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether I'm making friends here. Um, yes, it's true. Um, um, we have early retirement possibilities in Germany. Uh, you know that well, retiring with uh, 63 um, uh, years of age under, under certain conditions. And that is taking people um, out of the workforce uh, who have super experience, um, uh, who are highly qualified, and who are still perfectly fit to work. Why do we do that? Um, when on the other side um, of the pyramid, um, there are not enough people uh, coming into the labor market. So again, it's, it's a simple thing. And we're not asking for uh, now everybody has to work until he's 70, especially if you have um, hard work uh, still in manual manufacturing processes um, or shift work. But there are many, many jobs um, where we see no problem at all um, to come to a longer lifetime uh, working term. And you don't and think again, that... You mentioned uh, there is a number of people who want that. Um, and that's that's um, at least uh, step number one, uh, that we make it easy for people um, uh, to work longer if they want. Okay. Um, but don't you feel that 
you know, with the progress that's been made in AI and automation and coming down the pike, robotics as well. I mean, robotics in manufacturing, you've seen, um, has um, been revolutionary for a while now. But um, don't you think that this should fulfill its promise of freeing up the time of workers so that they should be able to enjoy their lives more? Whatever happened to that? I think, I think, I think we really have to understand uh, the, the paradigm change um, that we have uh, through the um, demographic uh, development. I'm born in 66. And if I look uh, at the number um, of babies in 66, and I look at the number of babies in 20, uh, 2020 or 2021, take any year, it's half of this. It's half of this. We are not talking about three or 5%. You know, when we apply automation, when we apply artificial intelligence, you're absolutely right. We increase productivity. We can replace uh, or we can compensate part of the workforce that retires by improving our processes, by, by being more digital um, and by applying artificial intelligence. But not 50%. If, you know, we, we are talking about, uh, you know, this picture, we are talking about a pyramid like this. Um, and that is what we have to manage. All right. Um, just one final question, a bit of a personal question, but I'm sure people will find it relevant. Um, this is not a gotcha question, but how many hours a week do you work? <laughs> well, I, you know, I have a very, very flexible working time. Um, I think it's somewhere between 35 and 60, depending on the week. And if you ask me for an average over three months, I'd probably say 50 hours. So that's it. Carl Hoisken from the VDMA. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you.